Hi everyone, my name is Sean LeBlanc and I'm a wedding and portrait photographer from Calgary, Alberta, where I live with my beautiful wife and my two young energetic boys. So I got my first camera about 10 years ago on a mountain biking trip to Moab, Utah. And on that trip, I did very little mountain biking and a lot of playing around with my new camera and just trying new things. Uh, it was a Nikon D300. And uh, from there, I started to photograph families, which eventually led into wedding work. And I started to enter competitions, both locally and internationally, and started to do quite well at those competitions, even winning a few. And I was doing this all the while. I was an engineer in the corporate world. I used to work at a large energy company uh, in, a, in a smaller group, in a wind power group. And I'd often take my camera out to project sites with me to photograph the projects I was working on. Then in 2016, I had an incredible opportunity to photograph a destination wedding in Japan. Uh, during cherry blossom season, no less. And uh, I almost missed this opportunity because of my corporate world commitments. And it was really at that time that I started to consider becoming a full-time photographer and leaving the corporate world. And so eventually I took a leap of faith and resigned from the corporate world. So this is me holding my letter of resignation moments before walking down the hallway to my boss's office to let him know that I was leaving a great 14 year career as an engineer uh, to pursue my passion for photography. From there, I built a studio uh, in on my property. So I live on two acres on the west side of Calgary. And that's where I work out of now. So I I, uh, I photograph both local and destination weddings all over the world. Uh, I also do a lot of portrait work, primarily with families. Uh, started working with pets and, and started boudoir as well. And everything is centered on creating beautiful printed work for my clients. So you can see some of the large uh, wall art collections here that result from, the, from that work. I've also been doing some custom projects. So this is a photo from earlier this year where I created a, a 22 foot wall art collection for a client here in Calgary. So this was for his, uh, his luxury garage. And uh, this photo brings a smile to my face because uh, it was on this project where I learned I have a severe fear of heights. So, you know, I was 20 feet in the air on this uh, boom uh, that you see there holding these six foot panels and uh, it was it was quite an experience and so i also offer creative photography workshops uh, in canada and the u.s uh, this summer i was supposed to be in italy and the u.s as well but that's of course all been postponed uh, and i also offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorship with other passionate photographers mostly uh, to uh, to mentor on the business side of photography. But I'm here today to talk to you about composing intimate candid artistry. So I'll be talking a lot about how I approach creative photography and I'm hoping that you'll be able to take away some great tips and techniques that you can use on your next portrait or wedding. So clean background. So this is the number one thing that I look for when uh, approaching a, a new location that I've never shot at or you know just working with clients in general so where can I put them on a clean background to make them really stand out in the frame so for this photograph uh, you can see my clients they're walking along the ridge line on a clean background so I call this putting them on sky so you can see there is very little distraction uh, in behind them. So this this really helps to make them stand out in the frame. Here as well, now I'm using a longer lens. So this time the Nikon 85mm, um, basically shooting across the valley and just had my clients walk uh, down the mountainside here to find that little sliver where I could put them on sky to help them really stand out in the frame as well. 
With this photograph, now I'm placing my camera really low to the water and then shooting up. Again, having my clients walk along that ridge so you can see they're on that beautiful sky uh, on, a, on a very clean background. So again, standing out uh, in the frame. Here, I was able to find a higher vantage point. Um, you know, I talked a lot about putting clients on sky to help them uh, be on that clean background, but it doesn't always have to be the sky. So in this case, I was able to find a higher vantage point and then shoot down and use the lake in behind them as that clean background to really help them stand out in the frame. So this I thought would be a really good example to show you what I'm talking about. So here I was out in the beautiful Rocky Mountains with uh, a wonderful wedding couple here. And you can see their, uh, you can see the mountains in behind them. And so from this vantage point, they kind of blend into that environment. And it was as simple as getting a little bit lower, finding a lower vantage point uh, where I could shoot up and then again have them on sky. So you can really see there uh, how they, they stand out in the frame of doing that. So now that I've thought about where can I place my clients on a clean background, I start to think about how can I frame them to even take this photograph to the next level where um, I can create an even more bold and dramatic portrait for my client. Um, so I'll often look around and see what kind of uh, architectural elements I can use to bring into the photograph. So in this case, uh, this is a photograph of uh, downtown Calgary shot with uh, a longer lens. So here I'm using the 85. I was able to find that little sliver, that clean background where I posed my clients and I just used the steel uh, wiring from the bridge to create that creative frame. Here, this was from a wedding uh, I photographed in Spain. And so there, there's, it, there was this incredible uh, old castle there. And we were walking around and I found this location and it had this big iron doorway here that you see. And um, you can see in behind them, there was that nice clean background. And I just used that doorway as a way to frame them. Um, so here shooting a little bit wider as well. So with my 35 mil lens and uh, sort of bringing in some of those architectural elements from the castle. Um, and, and in this photograph, now I'm using more of the uh, natural elements that are around. So in this case, a over overhanging tree or a tree branch um, to help draw the viewer's eye of this photograph. Again, you can see my clients on a nice clean background there, walking along the ridge and using some of that foliage as a way to frame them within the frame. So leading lines. Uh, so now that I've thought about where can I place them on a clean background? How can I creatively frame them? Now I start to think about how can I draw the viewer's eye towards my clients within the photograph? So for that, I'll often use leading lines. So here, this is uh, some more of those architectural elements. This was actually a building that I used to walk by um, for all those years that I was working downtown Calgary. And I always thought it would be a really neat location for a creative portrait. And so, uh, so we, I had the opportunity to take my clients there on their wedding day. And uh, so again, I, I was able to find a, a clean background for them and used the this is actually a, a big vertebrae structure um, that they have here. And I use some of those wavy lines as a way to draw the viewer's eye in towards uh, my clients here. The other thing uh, about this photograph that you'll see a lot uh, uh, with my work, it, I like to use opposing primary colors. So that's the, the mix of this warm, part that you see on the left side of the frame <clears throat> mixed with this very cool background. So that's just another way to create more of a dramatic look to your photograph. So you'll see that uh, I use that technique quite often here. So for this photograph, now I'm using a wider lens. So the 24 shooting down towards my clients and using this staircase around them, uh, these lines that you see here 
uh, from the staircase as a way to draw uh, the viewer's eye in towards my clients. Here, uh, now using candles that were part of the wedding ceremony uh, as a way to, to go from the left of the frame all the way to the top right. And again, you see that clean background there. You're gonna hear me talk about that a lot. Um, and, and just using things that are part of the, the wedding ceremony. And again, just, just trying to find those lines as a way to, to draw the viewer's eye. So now that I've thought about clean backgrounds, creative framing, leading lines, I now start to look for triangles and angles because our eyes are attracted to triangles. Um, and so, you know, when you look at this portrait, uh, here I'm using a, a longer Nikon lens, so the 70 to 200, and I'm actually on the other side of another mountain, again, shooting across the valley. I found that clean background for my clients here. And this, this was a, a really interesting day. So we are on the top of a mountain and it was an incredibly windy day. So windy, in fact, that they had to shut down the gondola because the, the gondolas were blowing to the side. And so uh, I was up there with this, uh, with my wonderful clients. And uh, so we had a bit of time to, to try something a bit more creative. And so that's kind of how this photograph came to be. And so, you know, when you look at this, there's actually four triangles within this frame. So there's the foreground part of the photograph. There's this other triangle here on, this, on the uh, uh, mountainside to the right. And then you see the skyline also forming a triangle. And then even her veil is forming a triangle as well, just from the, the wind blowing so strong that day. And again, you're seeing the the opposing primary colors come into play as well. So that cool mixed with the warm foreground here. And then here's another example um, on a wedding day. So their wedding was out uh, on a beautiful ranch uh, just in the countryside here uh, near Calgary. And so of course horses were a big part of their life. And, and I thought that it would be really neat to frame them underneath a horse somehow and so with this photograph it took about a hundred frames or so for everything to line up um, but when it did it all came together beautifully so again you're seeing opposing primary colors here of this cool sky mixed with this warm foreground and of course three triangles where you've got this triangle forming uh, with the horse's legs on both sides and then as well as uh, the couple dancing in the background here, again, on clean sky or on clean background there. Here with a bridal party, um, you can see with all of their feet spaced apart, their legs are actually beginning to form triangles. So again, it's just one thing that I'm always looking for, um, you know, because again, our eyes are attracted to those triangles. And so as I'm photographing, shooting through these moments that are unfolding on either a portrait session or a wedding day. Uh, I'm always trying to capture uh, angles and triangles. Silhouettes. So this is uh, another technique I love to, uh, I love to use. And they're, they're quite easy to photograph. So you really just have to find a bright area in behind your clients and under expose or expose for that bright area. So in this case, I wish I had a behind the scenes photograph to show you, uh, but this was actually in a very busy parking lot. So there's cars everywhere and I found a picnic table. And so I had my clients simply stand on that picnic table. Uh, of course it was during their wedding day. So I just had them talk about um, how awesome the day had been. And I found a lower vantage point and then shot up from there. So again, placing my clients on that clean background. And with silhouettes, I mean, they're, they're all about shapes. And so for a silhouette, I'll often have my clients face each other and then photograph them from the side. So that way you're getting the shapes of their faces. So you can, you can see their noses, you can see this beautiful moment that they're having together uh, with, uh, with their smiles and their mouths open a little bit. And for one added element, I just had, I asked the bride to simply put her hands around 
uh, her husband's um, shoulders like that and was careful to make sure that her hands were away from his back so again creating that shape of the hand and I thought it was uh, was a really nice element to uh, to this photograph and again opposing primary colors where you're seeing that cool sky mixed with that warm um, cloud area here below them For this photograph, I'm using a, a longer lens, so the, the beautiful Nikon 200 f2. It's one of my favorite lenses to use. Um, it's incredibly sharp. The compression is, is amazing and one that, uh, that I'll bring along with me to pretty much every session. Um, and so for this photograph, what I did is I, I exposed for that bright area in behind. Again, had my clients face each other. Um, and then my assistant took uh, the bride's beautiful long veil and just simply threw it up into the wind and when she did that I took uh, probably about 20 photos or so to catch the veil uh, in this angle that you're seeing here so again going back to triangles and, and angles and capturing that and so I thought everything came together beautifully for for this photograph um, here this is on a bright sunny day and so I noticed this uh, bright cloud that was up in the sky. And so uh, again, just had my clients face each other, exposed for that bright sky, uh, specifically the cloud in behind them, and uh, was able to capture this, this really neat silhouette. Um, for this photograph, I wanted to try something a little bit different. I had the bridal party with me. We're at this really neat location uh, here in Calgary. And as we were walking, I noticed this textured background. So the sun was coming through a essentially a skylight and hitting this concrete wall and creating this really neat texture that you see in behind here. And I thought it would really work well as a silhouette and so I positioned the bridal party here again everyone facing each other so we're getting uh, the shapes of their faces and then I was careful that feet were, were apart so again we're looking for triangles here of course we have all sorts of triangles in behind this wall here as well had everyone facing each other asked the uh, the women to, or sorry, the bridesmaids to extend their arms a little bit. So again, creating the shape for the silhouette and even had the bride extend her elbow back so that we're getting this small little triangle here as well. So this was one that I thought came together really well. Um, something a little bit different uh, for the bridal party here as well. And so with this photograph, now you're starting to see a lot of the techniques that I've been talking about uh, sort of layered and come together. Um, so here, of course, opposing primary colors that I've been talking about a lot where you've got uh, the warm part of the left side of the frame here mixed with this cool sky. Uh, you've got some leading lines here. Of course, a bright area in behind my clients to create this silhouette that you see all sorts of triangles happening here. So again, starting to layer a lot of the techniques that I've been talking about. Um, and so this was taken at the new Calgary library uh, in downtown. And it's, uh, I, I love to shoot at that library. There's just so many interesting elements that you can bring into a, a creative portrait. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to note here is I was using a bit of a smaller aperture. So I was at five, six, and that was just to keep some of the detail uh, here in the foreground uh, as I captured this creative portrait. So often on a wedding day or a portrait session, I'm faced with a very mundane you know, or a very boring location and I have to create something extraordinary from it. And so one of the things I, I love to do is I'll always think about where can I get low, where can I get high, where can I go far and how can I get close? And I'll just kind of follow that sequence and it'll really start to, um, I guess, invigorate the creative juices. So what do I mean by that? So getting low, in this case, I'm literally just lying right on the ground 
with my uh, Nikon D850, my 35 mil lens, shooting up. You can see my clients are on sky here, clean background. And I just had um, the woman turn her face in towards the natural light that was coming from the sun. So, so that we got some beautiful light on her face. And there was this really neat uh, culvert here that uh, I thought would would work well as a creative frame. And so again, by, by getting low and shooting up, I was able to use that as a frame for this portrait. Here now I'm using a longer lens, so the Nikon 70 to 200. And of course we're out in the mountains, this beautiful location. This is just outside of uh, Moraine Lake. And I was able to find this, this little rock that, or I guess this boulder that was uh, standing out and just had my clients, of course, stand on that boulder to place them on a clean background in behind them and shot from below upwards to get this portrait here. Get high. So now that I've found some areas to go low, now where can I go high? So in this case, I'm standing on a balcony and shooting down. So again, you're seeing that clean background here. And it's as simple as having your, your clients walk together uh, through this beautiful pathway here and uh, just, just shooting through those moments. And so getting a different, unique uh, perspective in that case. Uh, here I was able to find uh, just a brick wall that was at my client's home and simply just pulled the bride's veil over top of both of them and shot from that higher vantage point to capture this. And, you know, I love going black and white for photographs like this because I find it just really captures the moment beautifully. And here you've got that nice balance of black and white where you've got this dark area here and behind uh, mixed with this brighter area in the foreground. Of course, you can see some triangles that are forming here. Uh, I shot it uh, wide open or close to wide open at 2.8. I like to keep it around 2.8 so that way I'm getting uh, nice sharp focal points uh, sp specifically around the eyes here. I also brought her hand up uh, to include her wedding ring and his hand as well and just to bring everything together for this uh, this beautiful portrait on their wedding day. Get far so this again is, is to create more variety. Uh, so here I'm using the foliage uh, from the trees that are around me to help fill the frame. Um, so my clients are quite a ways away and I am using a wider lens, so the 35 mil here. Uh, one thing I'd like to note is I use a smaller aperture at f11 and that was to keep this foliage above uh, sharp in the photograph. So I wanted to, to include that as part of the uh, creative frame here. And of course you can see they're on that clean background that I keep coming back to. And this moment was as simple as the groom helping his bride down, uh, down the hill here and shooting through that moment to capture this. So for this photograph I wanted to try something a little bit different, something a little bit more challenging. And so I was on the top floor of Hotel Arts, which is a popular hotel here in Calgary. And as I was walking to the room where all of the bridesmaids were getting ready, I noticed this open area where you see the bride and groom walking. And I thought, wow, that would be a really neat uh, area to place them and kind of bring in some of the the city elements you know the surrounding elements of where they were getting married and so I proposed this idea to uh, to the bride and, and she was up for it and uh, because a shot like this does take some time to set up um, so how it worked was I was on the top floor and my assistant was down at street level and we were on cell phones because um, I was just too far away to, to yell at that point and so uh, we also had to wait for traffic to slow down so that they could then walk down the, uh, the street there. And so um, it took a few frames, but eventually I was able to capture it. So again, you see that clean background here of them walking. 
also I waited I, I shot through the moment so that I was able to capture the bra or the uh, the groom's feet uh, separated as well so you can see that triangle that he's forming with his legs and I shot at a smaller aperture so f8 so I was able to bring in a lot of those city elements here and of course use a wider lens to bring in more of the environment so here this is probably uh, the farthest I've ever been away from my clients in, in taking a photograph um, so this was taken at the Rimrock Hotel I was uh, on the top penthouse floor and as we were up there for their ceremony, I saw this road that you see uh, the bride and groom walking down on. And I thought, wow, that would be a really neat um, way to capture the surrounding environment, of course, with, uh, with the bride and groom in the environmental portrait and proposed this idea to them. Again, this was a photograph that took probably 20, 25 minutes to set up. And this was taken a couple years ago when we had a lot of the BC forest fire. So a lot of that smoke was coming into the province. And uh, so that's why it looks a little bit hazy here uh, in the background. There was incredible smoke uh, on that day. Um, but, you know, we were able to capture something pretty special for them here. And so, again, on my cell phone, I had my assistant down on the road here. And I actually used off-camera flash for this. So here's a, a closer photo of my assistant holding an off-camera flash, so a Nikon um, SB5000 on full power because we had quite a bit of ambient light there and simply just had them walk down that path and we were able to, uh, to capture this environmental portrait for them. And then the final part is, is getting close. So for that, you know, here I've got my 35 mil and I'm really close to my clients in this case. So again, creating that variety. And this photograph, I always love to, to photograph couples almost kissing. You know, I just find that there's there's a bit of magic in that. Um, you know, so, so for this, it's really easy to do. Of course, this is on their wedding day, so they're very excited to see each other. And as they're they're kissing back and forth, I'm just shooting through those moments. And um, this was one that you know I thought it it worked really well as one of those almost kiss shots here. And I just had the bride slowly raise her hand up so that we could see her beautiful wedding ring. Of course, you're seeing lots of triangles form here from the veil being over top of both of them, and uh, just came together beautifully as a black and white. Here again, now I'm using the uh, the Nikon Macro 105. Um, and, you know, this photograph I like to show because even though her hand is on her fiance's face, of course, showing her beautiful engagement ring, but you can really see him smiling with his eyes. So you, you don't need to see his mouth, but you can see that he is smiling again with, with those eyes here. And in this case, the sun was in behind them, so it created this nice brim light um, on, uh, on the woman here. Off-camera flash. So when I don't have natural light to work with, I will often bring in off-camera flash. And so a lot of the students that I work with, um, you know, it seems that some photographers are scared to use off-camera flash. So I, I, I wanted to think about how I could talk about this and make it as simple as possible to understand. And so whenever I'm using off-camera flash, these are essentially the steps that I follow here. So first of all, I shoot manual. My camera's in manual. My flashes are in manual. Um, so if you're not shooting in manual now, just practice and get used to shooting that way. It'll just open up your, your creative photography. Second, I'll think about composition, so using some of those techniques that I've already discussed uh, earlier on. Uh, the next is I will expose for ambient light, so I'll think about ISO. So if it's a bright day outside, I only need to be at ISO 100, whereas if it's a very dark room, I'll be around 3200. The next part is 
I always make sure my shutter speed is less than 1 2 50th of a second. So that way I'm below the sync speed of my D850 and able to use the full power of my flash. And then I'll think about aperture. So what kind of creative effect do I want? Do I want to shoot wide open or do I want a smaller aperture to bring in more of the foreground detail? And from there, I'll underexpose the ambient by one to two stops and then finally adjust my flash output. So I want to show you a few examples here. So for this creative portrait, uh, this was taken at a very old hotel and we've got this beautiful light hanging from the ceiling here. Again, you're seeing that warm light mixed with that cool background, so opposing primary colors that I've talked about. Lots of triangles within this frame. And I'm using a wider lens, so my 24 mil, to bring in more of the, the room elements here. And I simply just had my, my uh, assistant stand on top of the stairs with a flash pointing down. And so again, for that, I typically use a Nikon uh, SB5000. And one thing I'd like to say about off-camera flash is that I always use a some sort of modifier, so some way to kind of shape the light that's coming from the flash. Um, so without this, I would, of course, have flash or light spilling everywhere. But this is a great way to create more of a focused stream of light coming from my flash. And so that's what you're seeing here in this portrait. So here I'm exposing for the light bringing in my off-camera flash to balance it and then in post-production bringing in bringing up the shadows and then of course doing all my final edits that way so here now I'm out in the Rocky Mountains again you can see that I've underexposed for the, this portrait here with my client standing on this, uh, this ledge, bringing in the off-camera flash, adjusting the flash output to make sure I have uh, beautiful light hitting them here, and then the final edit. So here I just zoomed in, and uh, again you can see that clean background, and just so I had that beautiful light hitting them here. Um, in this case, I'm out in Canmore, uh, a simple moment of uh, the groom walking his beautiful bride down the mountainside. Here I'm using a, a longer lens, so again the 200 f2, I mentioned that I love to use that lens. Uh, also shot at 2.2, so pretty much wide open, and I'm always amazed by how sharp my photographs are, even shooting wide open at 2.2 uh, at with that lens. Here's a photograph of my assistant actually holding the flash to light my, um, my clients here. And this is a, a behind the scenes photograph. I, I did a little video of it as well if you'd like to check it out on my Instagram. Um, but here this gives you an idea of how far away I actually was from, uh, from my clients using that 200 f2. Here as well this was in Pato Lake <clears throat> and you can see my clients are on a very dark background, clean background, and to help them really stand out in this photograph, I asked the groom to hold a flash beside them pointing up towards this umbrella, so that way it created that separation from that uh, dark background there. Of course, you're seeing some triangles here with the mountains. This lake, uh, Pato Lake, is acting a, a bit as a leading line in towards my client. So again, bringing in some of those techniques that I've talked about. Here as well. <clears throat> so it, in this case, you can really see how using a, a modifier such as this to really focus the light can create that dramatic portrait. Um, so here, using this window as a frame with my clients on this dark background, with a focused off-camera flash here. Of course, we've got triangles all over the place with this being a, a train inside of a building and shooting with a wider lens here with my 24. So again, when I don't have natural light to work with, that's often when I'll bring in off-camera flash. Um, I've talked about using a flash as a main light source 
but you can also use an off-camera flash to create silhouettes. So if you think about a silhouette, to capture a silhouette, you just need that bright background in behind your clients. And for these, I'm just using a flash to do exactly that. So if you look at this creative portrait here, my assistant is crouched down in behind my clients, simply pointing the flash at this door. And so when my flash uh, flashes, the light is hitting this door, bouncing back onto these walls, which are creating leading lines in towards my clients here. And of course, it being a silhouette, I've got my clients facing each other to create these, these beautiful shapes that you see here. Uh, here I'm back in the Calgary library, so one that I've talked about earlier. And <clears throat> here you can see my assistant up on the uh, second floor here with my off-camera flash. And what she's gonna do is create a bright spot in behind my clients, again, facing each other to create that silhouette. If you look here, um, again, she's just using that flash to create that bright spot in behind them and I'm able to capture some of these beautiful uh, elements of the Calgary Library here as part of this portrait. So another technique I like to look for are reflections. Um, so when you look at this photograph, this is a great example of layering multiple things that I've, that I've talked about here. So this was taken at the art gallery in Edmonton, Alberta, and as I was walking up the staircase here, uh, there were there was a glass railing and I noticed that this glass railing was reflecting the stairs that I was walking up on and I thought it would be really neat to, to try a creative portrait here. So I positioned my clients on this staircase, had my assistant off to the right hand side, of course modifying my off camera flash to create this focused light that you're seeing here. I had the bride turn her face towards the light, so we're getting some beautiful light onto her face and a beautiful moment between them. And you can even see the way that she was posed with her longer wedding dress that created a triangle with her wedding dress. So some of those angles that I've been talking about. On a clean background, you know, a very cool feel to this photograph mixed with the warm light that's that's hitting my clients here and then these lines that you're seeing are the reflections of the staircase that I was walking up on which which are essentially creating leading lines in towards my clients there here as well so now I'm in a parking garage and using off-camera flash again with a modifier to focus the lights. And this simple reflection here is just my iPhone balanced under my 58 millimeter lens to create a reflection of these ceiling lights uh, that were coming here that I was using as a leading line to draw the eye towards my clients. You see there's four of them. We've got those opposing primary colors of the warm lights mixed with this cool structure here. And then, of course, a beautiful moment between them. And then here, this was a photograph taken in a, in a hotel that had these really neat uh, light structures that you see here in the foreground. And here I'm using a very focused uh, filter for my off-camera flash. And as I took photographs, I noticed that there were portraits hanging on the wall and that their reflection was showing up in these pictures that were hanging on the wall. And there happened to be one that had this really neat um, mat here that you see. And so when the light hit my couple, because it was lighting up that dark area, it was creating a reflection in that portrait. And so I just moved slightly and I was able to capture that here on the bottom. So I've already shown some examples of layering these techniques that I've been talking about, but I'm gonna take it to the next level and show a way to combine even more techniques uh, into one creative photograph. So if you look at this one, um, here I'm using my 58 millimeter lens shooting uh, pretty much wide open at f2.4. 
Now this is a row of 10 wine glasses with some very strong light from above hitting those wine glasses. And so I found a little bit of little opening here between the wine gla glass stems. And because that light from above the wine glasses was strong and hitting them, it created these beautiful bokeh balls that you see here in the foreground. And because there was uh, 10 rows of these wine glasses, that's why you're seeing so many of these bokeh balls. And so this was during a, uh, my client's wedding reception. So in between speeches, I uh, just went up to them and I said, hey, I've got this idea for a really neat creative portrait. Uh, would you guys be up for it? It'll take about five minutes or so. And, and they were all over it. And so I, I came up and uh, <clears throat> positioned them along the wall. And I had my assistant take my off-camera flash, again with a modifier on it, to create this focused bright spot in behind them on this wall here. Had my clients face each other. Again, because it's a silhouette, I want to capture that those beautiful shapes and brought the bride's hand up just to play with his chin a little bit. And so, um, and then everything came together. So here again, shooting through those wine glasses and using off-camera flash to create that bright spot in behind. For this photograph, this was uh, from a wedding I shot in Costa Rica. Um, so this was during the getting ready portion of the day. And the bride here, of course, is on a clean background. And there was this shower uh, wall, glass shower wall that was in behind her. And I noticed one of her bridesmaids was out on the balcony that was facing the beautiful ocean. And because of this bright spot that was in behind her bridesmaid, it was creating a silhouette. And so uh, I had my assistant hold my off-camera flash again with a modifier on it. And just kind of shot through all of these moments. So where the makeup artist was applying makeup and I wanted to get it such that there was some space in between her hand with the brush and you know just capture a beautiful moment there but also had to wait for the bridesmaid to turn her head again because silhouettes are all about shapes and she was looking straight on for the longest time and uh, it Eventually, she turned her head slightly and I was able to capture this. And so you see I'm combining off-camera flash with a silhouette with opposing primary colors of that cool sky mixed with the, the warm wall that you see here. Of course, a reflection. And so all of these techniques are now layered uh, within this, this photograph here. Here I'm back at the Calgary Library um, for, for another photo session. And for this portrait, this was a two light setup where I had a flash sitting in behind my clients here, pointed at the wall with a warm filter uh, focused on this, this back wall here. And I had another flash on the floor pointed at this wall in the foreground with a cool filter, again, to create those opposing primary colors. But this flash also created a leading line in towards my clients. And of course, a silhouette, so my clients are facing each other and um, formed some triangles just by moving uh, her elbow back away from her body. And of course, facing each other again. So again, layering a lot of those techniques that I've been talking about. So I've talked a lot about composition. I've talked a lot about light, but what really makes a compelling portrait is bringing it all together with a beautiful moment. And really, in my mind, moment will trump light and composition. Um, you know, to capture a beautiful moment, that is really what your clients will be drawn to. And, you know, from a business, a photography business perspective, um, you want to be creating beautiful candid moments for your clients so that translates into printed work for them. So some of the techniques I use are, are very simple. Um, for this one here, I'm using a bit of a wider lens, so my 35 mil lens. And all I asked my clients to do was walk up this hill with their foreheads touching. 
simple as that. And so we did it a couple times. And, and what I noticed is because it's, it's quite challenging to do that, especially when it's raining and holding an umbrella. And so as we did it a couple times, it start to, it started to bring out this beautiful candid moment between my clients here. Um, because you know, they would separate a little bit, then they'd come back together and bonk heads and they would just laugh. And so throughout that whole sequence, I was just shooting through that to capture this beautiful moment that you see here. Also, I asked the bride to bring up her left hand and place it on top so that way we could see her, her beautiful wedding ring. Uh, here as well, so again, a silhouette, so side profile. This, uh, basically I just told them to, I told the groom to try and kiss his bride and the bride not to let him kiss her. As simple as that. And so, um, you know, he's trying to kiss her. She's trying to, to say no. And again, it elicits that candid, natural moment that you see here. And so for this photograph, this was on their beautiful wedding day. And it was simple as asking them to kiss each other. And so I had her veil pulled over top of me, which created these leading lines that you're seeing here. Of course, I placed them on this uh, clean background that you see, had her raise her hand up uh, so that we could, way we could see her beautiful wedding ring and just brought everything together that way. So in summary, I've talked about a number of different techniques. I've talked about layering those techniques. So next time you are on a portrait session, or on a wedding day, um, you know, think about those clean backgrounds. I've talked about that a lot. Creative framing, so how to frame your clients within uh, your photographs. Leading lines, so how to draw the viewer's eye towards your clients. Of course, triangles and angles. Opposing primary colors. Uh, silhouettes, so finding those bright areas to create a silhouette, something a little bit different off-camera flash when you don't have the available natural light, uh, reflections, and then finally layering all of those techniques to create a bold and dramatic wedding portrait. So thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's been an honor to be here. And you can find me online uh, on Instagram at Sean LeBlanc. Also, you're welcome to visit my website at SeanLeBlancPhotography.com. And uh, would love to hear from you. Reach out anytime. Thank you so much.